What? A Z490 motherboard that can drive the 10900K at almost 300 watts? That's impossible. Nope. That is the Phantom Gaming ITX Thunderbolt 3 that I'm really excited about. This motherboard is nuts. I can't believe it's LGA 1200. It's got a black and silver aesthetic. It's pretty minimalist and understated, but wait, what's this? You can't possibly fit this much motherboard on an ITX form factor in like the ITX footprint. And so they didn't, they cheated, they went vertical. I haven't been this perpendicular since the Hitachi super paramagnetic effect recording video meme flash thing. It's called the super paramagnetic effect. Super Kala what? Super paramagnetic effect. That's when all you little bits get perpendicular. Get perpendicular. So yeah, there's a riser card. And on this riser card is our primary M.2 interface, two more SATA ports, two USB 2 ports, a speaker connection in case you're gonna connect with a speaker. And this gives you some more expansion capabilities than they were otherwise able to fit on the, uh, the printed circuit board. So that's pretty awesome. It's in a weird SODIM-ish looking slot. Don't try to plug a SODIM into that. It's its own board, but it is removable to make it a little easier for you to mount your uh, M.2. It's just when you're gonna take it out, there's two screws. You gotta take the screws out. Don't miss the screws, because you'll break stuff if you try to take it out without taking the screws out. The screws really help hold it in and make it nice and nice and secure. So it's been really well designed. And that really well thought out design has translated into the rest of the motherboard. But what do you get in the box? Well, there's not really a ton in the box. It's a super tiny box, it's ITX. You do get a premium Wi-Fi 6 antenna. So this is not a rubber duck antenna. You can move this around uh, outside the case. You can plug it in, you can put it in. I've got my Dan Case A4 and my Sliger lunchbox build. And uh, because of the power requirements of Z490 CPUs in general, even the plucky little i5 10600K, you can fit a dual, you know, 120 millimeter cooler in this thing right here. You can even do a custom loop if you do some, you know, small radiator and some other stuff. This works really well for that sort of a build. The Dan case, it's a little bit more of a challenge cooling those CPUs from Intel because, ooh, they drink the power. And this antenna gives you the option to, you know, move it around and put it wherever you need to. It's not just sticking out the back of the computer, so that works really well. Also in the box, you've got a motherboard manual, driver installation CD, postcard, you know, the, the ASRock Phantom Gaming postcard. You've got your M.2 hookups, and you've got some Velcro straps and two SATA cables. So. It's a pretty minimal bundle, really. All right, so at the rear I.O., we've got DisplayPort, HDMI, or Wi-Fi 6 interface, combo PS2 mouse and keyboard port. That's great for people like me that still rock Model M's on some of my machines, although I got the Model F now, so that's USB. That works out pretty good. Two 5 gigabit USB 3 ports, a clear CMOS button, a 10 gigabit USB 3.2 port, and then Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt can be whatever you need it to be because Thunderbolt, that is a Titan Ridge controller. So it's the latest stepping and revision of the Titan Ridge silicon because there's like four revisions of that silicon out there. So nice job, ASRock. We've also got the Realtek Phantom Gaming 2.5 gig LAN and two more five gig USB ports. And we've also got our Nehemic audio implementation. It's an NE 5532 headphone amplifier. It's 120 dB signal to noise ratio, optical SPDIF out, gold plated connectors. This is a relatively high end implementation of the Realtek ALC1220 for most onboard motherboards. It is a gaming motherboard. And so ASRock has provided a relatively high-end audio solution on this ITX motherboard for that. If you want an even higher end audio solution, you can go with the USB DAC. You can also use the optical SPDIF cable, take the optical audio out somewhere else and you're not gonna get any noise or interference or anything like that because it's pure digital signal. It's gonna be you know wherever you're going to analog somewhere else. In terms of other connections on the motherboard, we have three four pin fan headers. Those will work with DC or PWM fans, a 50-50 LED header and a digital RGB LED header, a 30 pin USB header, so two more USB five gigabit ports, two more SATA ports. So there's a total of four SATA ports on this motherboard. And then remember, we've got their other M.2 on the back of the motherboard. So this motherboard has a total of two usable M.2 ports. And most cases, like our Slider lunchbox case, are taking that into account now. You just pop out a couple of screws and you can get to the M.2 slots at the rear of the motherboard. You do not have to take out the motherboard or completely disassemble the system to get to those M.2 ports on the very back of your motherboard. It's not necessarily true on all small form factor builds. The VRM implementation on this motherboard, what black magic are they 
doing on this thing to give me 5.3 gigahertz stable on our Super Cherry 10900K. Well, it turns out it's a little bit of black magic. So first off, there's two fans, the VRM here at the top and the VRM here at the rear IO. They both have their own independent fans. These fans will not come on unless the VRM is running hot enough to require it. And in my experience on an open air test bench, the fans didn't even come on. In order to get the fans to come on, I had to put the plexiglass hood over our test bench cover. And then there's only just like the one fan. And then with the custom loop cooling this thing, only then was it such that, yeah, you kind of needed to have the little VRM fans run. And if you create a bad situation for airflow, these fans, you can hear them. They will move a lot of air. But this is a 90 amp implementation. It's actually, it's nine phases, but it's six plus two plus one. So you have six phases for your V-Core, um, two phases for your SOC, and one phase for your system agent. Now it's 90 amp chokes on the V-Core uh, group of phases and 60 amp chokes for everything else. So that is a ridiculous amount of, that's over 500 amps for your plucky little 10 series CPU. And hopefully Rocket Lake soon will be out and that would be nice. But where's Rocket Lake? Where's Rocket Lake? The memory implementation also is very clean on this because you've only got the two DIMM slots. ASRock can really squeeze a lot out of that. DDR4 4000 CL16 with a Trident Z kit from, from G-Skill. I mean, that's a really expensive kit of memory, but this motherboard could do it. And that's better, like this combination of features is better than some ATX motherboards. I mean, yeah, you don't have the extra expansion slots, but in terms of power delivery, memory frequency, and peripherals, uh, better than ATX in an ITX form factor is something to be very excited about. Now, there are two major things that I was gonna complain about on this motherboard. The first, USB connectivity. I really think there's more room for more USB ports at the back. I mean, we've only got a total of five type A ports. If you've got a USB keyboard and mouse, and then your front panel connections, no USB-C. Uh, I mean, there is not a lot of real estate on this motherboard, but even USB 2.0 ports at the back would have been fine. The other thing I was gonna complain about was the Intel 2.5 gig NIC. And uh, that's a habit I'm gonna have to break because see, the Intel one gig NIC is legendary for like 10 years. It was flat out the best option because there's actually resources on the CPU to work specially with the Intel NIC chipset. And Intel has always charged board partners a premium for that. Well, there's the Intel 2.5 gig NIC, which if it works correctly, is great. But there's at least one, I think now two different revisions of the silicon. So we're on version three of the Intel two and a half gig NIC. And it has performance dropout and weirdness and a lot of other problems. This motherboard has the Dragon, the Realtek 2.5 gig NIC, which is actually better than rolling the dice on whether you're gonna get a bugged out Intel 2.5 gig chipset or not. Maybe once Intel fixes their, uh, you know, their, their process problems or whatever it is with that silicon, it'll be back to legendary status. But the Realtek 2.5 gig NIC, of course, will work fine at one gigabit. But yeah, that's really my only complaint is the USB connectivity. Can't really fault them much for that. I mean, your internet connection is not faster than a gigabit probably, so that's totally okay. In terms of Linux support, it's Z490. Z490 is not a lot different from Linux's point of view, from Z390, from, from, Z2, so from Z170 even, because most of the changes that go with these new motherboard chipset numbers, it's really to do with power delivery. And so LGA1200 is all about power delivery for those 10th generation CPUs. And PCIe 4 support, again, on the as yet not here, uh, sir not appearing in this in this video, Rocket Lake CPU that we, we haven't seen. So uh. sensors is the only thing that's a little sketchy. It does seem like Hardware Info 64 is a little more functional with the onboard sensors on this motherboard than Linux, but LM sensors was able to detect some of the sensors and you will get CPU temperature and stuff like that. So if you really want to get into the, the nitty gritty, uh, okay. You, uh, Thunderbolt support was basically okay on Linux. Hot plug for me is always sketchy on Linux and I never know if it's because it's my peripherals or just Thunderbolt in general on Linux or some of the other parameters. Uh, you can hot plug like a basic storage device and that's okay because you can eject it, but I've got an external eGPU and I never have much luck ejecting that even when I unload the kernel modules. So I'm gonna chalk that up to just Linux more so than the Thunderbolt implementation, but the Thunderbolt implementation does work on Linux, so. So overall, this is an incredibly impressive ITX motherboard from ASRock. I never would have thought that there would be a no compromises 
uh, power delivery option in the ITX form factor when we're talking the Intel 10900K. Truthfully, I don't really recommend the 10900K except for a best of the best gaming build. The 10850K from Intel, if you're gonna go with Intel, is a much better option. It's much easier on the wallet, and you really don't lose anything versus the 10900K unless you're also spending a ton of money on your cooling solution and everything else. If you're just gonna do, you know, a basic all-core overclock, you know, say like five gigahertz or maybe 5.1 gigahertz, sort of set it and forget it without pushing the voltage, without really keeping an eye on your thermals, this motherboard is the perfect motherboard for the 10850K in an ITX form factor because of the power delivery options, because the power delivery options are a little bit overkill, because of the dual M.2 and because of the other peripherals on this motherboard, it makes a great gaming build. This is even a great choice if you're gonna go with something like the 10600K, Although I might recommend that you trade up to one of the more expensive Intel CPUs if you're gonna go with an Intel CPU um, rather than go ITX. But if you must have an ITX small form factor system that is extremely high performance, this is a great option. It is a shockingly good option because usually with ITX there's some kind of a compromise. And with this, it's just ITX. It's the same stuff and an ITX form factor. It's, just, it's better than some of the other Z490 motherboards that we've seen enter the market, but in an ITX form factor. Better than an ATX motherboard in an ITX form factor. It's, it's crazy. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out, and I'll catch you later. If you pick up one of these or build a system around this, post some pictures on the Level 1 forum so everybody can see. It's a lot of fun. I like to see it, if nothing else. All right, signing out, and I'll see you later.